Greetings, and welcome to another TV Box review. Taking the spin is another new TV Box sporting the Amlogic S905 X3 chipset. This is the X3 Mini, and it comes in two models, a 32 and 64GB model, both carrying 4GB of RAM. This is the 64GB model, and I would like to thank the sellers over at Cafargo.com for sending this box for today's review. So after the break, I will put it to the test and let's see what the X3 Mini has to offer. Stay tuned, a full review is up next. Welcome back, this is the box it comes in, and all it says on the box is that it's the 64GB model, so I will proceed with a quick unboxing. In the box you have nothing out of the ordinary. You have the new X3 Mini itself. You get one infrared remote. One HDMI cable. A 5V 2 amps DC power adapter. And a user's manual. Let's take a look at its design and what ports we have on this box. The body is made of plastic, with the X3 Mini logo printed to the top. To the rear of the box. You have one HDMI port. One Ethernet LAN port. 1 optical audio port, 1 audio video port, an IR extender port, and a DC power input jack. To one side, you have 1 USB 2.0 port, 1 USB 3.0, 1 micro SDTF card reader, and a reset button. There are some cooling vents on the other side. At the front, you have an LED clock display and two LED power lights. And below the box, you have some more cooling vents. I will now set it up on my 4K TV and capture card and continue. So I'm back, and setting up the box was pretty standard. As I boot up for the first time, you are greeted with an X3 mini animation for a few seconds. Then you're taken directly to the launcher. So this is the X3's launcher. And it has a different layout from most launchers, with three large main buttons to the top and these buttons cannot be changed. To the bottom here you have a limited shortcuts bar for adding only 5 shortcuts. The launcher does not come with a navigation bar or a status bar for easy navigation with mouse pointers, and the stock remote does not have an air mouse feature. In the apps section they have included the AirScreen app, App Installer, Chrome Browser, File Browser, KD Player, MX Player, Netflix, the Google Play Store, Amazon Prime Video, and Smart YouTube Player. And now I will install some additional apps needed for my review. Features of this firmware include 4K display resolution up to 2160p at 60Hz. Dolby Vision, with the option to set the priority between video and graphics. Screen position settings. HDR display settings. Digital audio settings, with the option to select the audio output medium, and they also included in this section your Dolby Atmos and DTS surround sound audio options. HDMI CEC settings. Power key options. And picture color adjustment settings. Under the device preferences area you have your core system settings, and under sound settings you have the same audio options to manually enable Dolby Audio, Dolby Atmos, and DTS audio features. This firmware does not include a root switch feature, hardware monitor feature, or screen rotation feature. So I'm back, and to start this segment I will first check the root state of the box. The root check app shows that the box is not rooted, running on Android 9 operating system. This box does not have a root switch feature, so this doesn't make any sense on this box, as it means that you are limited in many ways on the Google Play Store, and many apps will not be available for install. The DRM information shows that the box has Google Widevine Level 3 and no HDCP protection. This means that premium streaming services like Netflix and Amazon Prime Video will only show in basic 480p quality. Let's look at its system and hardware information. 
The manufacturer of this box is Droid Logic, and the model is the X3 Mini. It comes with 4GB of DDR3 RAM and 64GB of internal storage from which this is the remainder. The Bluetooth version is 4.2, indicated by the 4 Plus, and I will connect a gamepad to this later in the video. The CPU is the Quad-Core ARM Cortex-A55 CPU running up to 1.9GHz in 32-bit mode. The CPU is the Amlogic S905X3, and it is configured with 32-bit ABIs. The display is powered by the ARM Mali G31 processor, with a refresh rate of 60Hz and OpenGLES version 3.2 which is really good for gaming. Under network, it shows that the box has dual band 2.4 and 5GHz Wi-Fi support. Under Android information, it shows that the box is running on Android 9 operating system, and it also shows that the box is not rooted. Under thermal information, it shows that the box is running between 40 and 60 degrees Celsius under normal operation, and we will monitor to see how high it increases during treaty gaming. The box comes with codecs for playing 4K videos, and I will test its Dolby features in a moment. And that's it for system and hardware information, and let's see how it does in the benchmark segment and where it fits on the rankings chart. For the record, I had to sideload most of my apps because they weren't available on the Play Store, and the first benchmark score I have is the results from the A1 SD Bench app that measures memory and internal storage read and write speeds. The results show that the X3 Mini has a RAM copy speed of 2249 megabytes per second. The internal storage has a read speed of 106 megabytes per second and a write speed did not give a reading. These results are not what I expected, with the RAM copy speed in the low 2000s. Next, I have the results of the Wi-Fi and LAN speed test. The results show that the X3 Mini was able to hit the maximum download and upload speed of my internet package of 100 megabits per second on the 5 GHz Wi-Fi band only. The 2.4 band fell below by 45%, and the LAN port by 73%. So for the best internet speed use the 5 GHz band. This also means that this box does not have a gigabit Ethernet LAN bandwidth. I now show the results of the new Antutu version 8 benchmark, the score I will use to place it on my chart. The X3 Mini got a score of 77,753. And this is a good score, and it should rank well on the chart. The CPU benchmark shows that the box got a Geekbench 4 score of 861 single core, and 2276 multi core. Another good score by the X3 Mini and we will compare it on the chart to the previous X2 CPU. The final score is the Ice Storm Extreme and the Slingshot GPU Graphics Benchmark. The X3 Mini got a score of 5661 in the Ice Storm Extreme, and 515 in the Slingshot Test. These scores should perform well in some Android games which I will try in a moment. But before I proceed. Let's see where it placed on my chart. So after updating the scores. The X3 Mini placed at number 6 in reference to Antutu scores, which is pretty good for this box, placing it well on this chart of TV boxes for 2020. You can find this chart on my website in full spreadsheet format, where you can interact with it and compare different scores, see the link in the description area. Before I start the next segment, please know that alternative launchers and the screen rotation feature doesn't work because of the no root access. So I will just skip that demonstration and move on to its streaming features. For entertainment features the box comes pre-installed with Netflix. You cannot install Netflix directly off of the Google Play Store you have to sideload it using an alternative APK app store. You can also install Amazon Prime Video off of the Play Store directly. Both Netflix and Amazon Prime plays in standard 480p quality due to limited DRM support. The YouTube app comes pre-installed in the version of Smart YouTube TV, but it's not the updated Android TV version. You can easily install this version from the Aptoid App Store, so you can play videos in 4K quality up to 2160p resolution. I will now play some 4K videos in HDR format.
The samples played OK and in HDR 10-bit formats. I will now test for Dolby Atmos and DTS audio output via the HDMI and optical audio ports. So this test confirms that the X3 Mini has Dolby Atmos and DTS audio via HDMI, but it doesn't have Dolby True HD. I did the same on the optical audio port, but when I set the output to SB Diff Optical Audio I had no audio output whatsoever. See for yourself. There is supposed to be an optical audio icon that appears on the screen when in this configuration, but I tried many times and the results were the same. So this means that the X3 Mini does not have optical audio output. I will now play some Android games. The joy of cup football is you really can't predict what's going to happen. Maybe the same these days about the league games because the sense of competition is so good. But in the cup, it's not always about performance. It is all about results. Yeah, and I think there are some players, certain characters that can handle Cup competitions better, it suits. He is the governor general of this team. Passed it, gets it back, passes it again, wants it back. He's got space, here's the chance. This late, and that's great. It must be the winning goal. Oh. Oh.
The game handling is really good, it's a shame you don't have root access to use keymapping apps. My gamepad connected to the box via Bluetooth without issues, and the games played are all gamepad compatible. So in summary, the X3 Mini is another great TV box on good hardware with a disappointing firmware. This box is the perfect box for the price, and they just had to make it weird. The firmware is not rooted, lacks a navigation and status bar, it has a limited Google Play Store, and the launcher is frustrating to use. The only issue I have with the hardware is the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi band and the LAN port has low connection speeds. A firmware update with fixes to issues highlighted in this video will make this box a really great TV box to buy. Sometimes I wonder if they want their boxes to sell at all. It beats me. I have come to the end of my review. If you're interested in the X3 Mini see my associate link in the description area or on my website. Using my link also lends support in acquiring more great TV boxes for review. Thanks for watching, it was a pleasure having you for today's review. Give this video the thumbs up if you like the information presented, and if you have any questions about this box leave a comment in the comments area or send me an email. And if you would like to see more videos hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell to receive an email when I release a new video or do a giveaway. Keep the streaming community alive, and see you in the next one.